What is up, y'all? This is the Houston Theater Scene, and I am Kale Ownby. Thank you for joining me as I continue to explore what Houston theater has to offer. Of course, I'm doing this during uh, COVID, so we're a little bit limited on what we can go see and what we can experience, but I love the availability to talk to people, to do these Zoom interview conversation things. Today, I have a conversation with Aaron Garrett. He is the artistic director at Pro Noia Theater here in Houston. Pro Noia Theater. I love the name. Towards the end of the conversation, Aaron explains a little bit where the name comes from and his intentionality behind the group. Uh, Pro Noia is kind of a conglomerate of a couple different uh, features or, or shows that happen, a lot of original works, some improv, and Aaron also has a podcast that he's doing. So check that out and enjoy the show. How's it going? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for for jumping on this. Yeah, of course. Very excited. Um, Is this good framing for you? That works for me. Awesome. I'm, I'm trying to keep this... I come from a video production like background Mm -hmm. and so my ADD and like perfectionism can get in the way of like actually having conversations and good content. So I'm trying to like let some of that go and and the curtains halfway in the frame and I'm like half whatever. I don't. Yeah. I had, uh, we did a show last night on online and I had a similar thing where I was just like, Oh, well, the lag's really bad and people are uh, like the sound quality's not great and I don't know what's going on and uh, I hope people are liking it because I know I'm being driven crazy. <laughs> this It's so hard to do uh, performance kind of stuff on on uh, video feed. Yeah, yeah, especially when you're trying to coordinate, say, more than two people or anything like that. Oh, my goodness. It gets crazy. Live. But yeah. 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 It was, uh, uh, it was fine. Actually it, it got, it got much better as it went on. And, uh, but, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. That's very cool. I'm, yeah. I'm so excited to hear all the creative things people are doing during this time. And then like all the challenges that you wouldn't expect or that you don't usually have in a live situation or a, a yeah. face-to-face situation. Yeah. Well, for us, I mean, we can, we can wait or not wait, or I can repeat, but for us, certainly we do a lot of comedy. So not having audience feedback (laughs) is very different. And timing and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, how do you know Q? Cause, cause I was introduced to you through Q. Sure. Uh, I worked with him at et cetera. Okay. Um, I was there for about two years or left there about, uh, about a year ago. Oh, awesome. Very cool. And yeah. you you have the Houston theater scene email account, so I assume that's your thing? Yeah, it's uh it's a little like side project. I'm I'm just on the like it's been in process in thought process for a long time and I'm just on the cusp of like executing it. And I what I intended to do or what I intend to do is to talk to people who are in the Houston theater community um to get like stories and 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 get to know people and get more opportunities to go see shows yeah. because there's so much so much darn theater in Houston yeah and it's hard to know that's one of the um one of the things when he asked about the Houston theater landscape that I was like you know there's a lot of it and we don't seem to know about any of it exactly yeah so i don't i don't know the the breadth or width of this project um i just i want to get these conversations going and and i'm let you know i'm recording this um yeah, i figured maybe cut it up maybe not maybe just throw it up you know raw i don't know but get these conversations going and get some you know ideally it'd be nice to have some exposure for for some of the houston theater because i mean all these i'm out in out in suburbia and Everyone out here is, you know, the the, the big three or whatever, right? Um, Tuts and Broadway, the like alley. the touring show, like good good quality yeah. stuff. But why not support stuff in Houston? 
Yeah, well, when I was growing up, I grew up uh, right outside of Houston, and uh, I was also very into theater, but that's all I knew was, t I didn't even know about the alley until I was in college. Um, and I only knew Tuts and Wortham and Broadway Across America. And I feel as though I lost out on a lot of things I could have been seeing or could have been participating in from a younger age. For sure. Yeah. Uh, all right, how do you want to begin? Uh, I I figure I will use some of the stuff that we've already used. Um, oh, but fantastic. a couple a couple things that I'm, you know, I I think it'd be good to start off with is like, what's what's your story? What are you doing? Like, I know you're involved in a lot of things. What are you yeah. doing now? And where'd you like? How'd you get here? I, I'm I'm very curious about your story. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Aaron Garrett. I'm the artistic director of Pronoia Theater, which is a theater company that specializes in what uh, what we call alternative theater, uh, for lack of a better word, and uh, original works. And then also I am involved, like uh, a lot of people in Houston, I'm involved in a number of companies in a number of different capacities, mostly volunteer. Um, so Pronoia began as uniting two separate projects of mine, one of which is Magical Lying Hour, which is a theatrical improv show where we have an actor memorize a scene from a, a contemporary play. And then we have an improviser who doesn't know anything about uh, the, the play that they're going to be watching. And they join together and their goal is to create a new scene so the actor can't change their lines but they can change the way they deliver them and then of course based on what the improviser is telling them about the world or about their character the actor has to improvise a little the improviser has to think on their feet a little bit more than they usually would and it's it's always it's always a really fun time we just did our first uh, online show last night that went pretty well and then, of course, having to read all the plays for Magical Lang Hour, I'm just reading plays constantly and, and learning and thinking about new things. And then the other project that Pronoia United uh, is a sketch comedy group called Be Kind to Strangers, which I began with my friend Dustin Tannehill, who's no longer part of the company, in 2012 after we graduated from college. And I, I feel as though sketch comedy or really short theater in general, short form theater, is really derogated and sort of ignored in a way that isn't super helpful and definitely is limiting to kind of everybody involved in the theater community. And so we enjoy showing people that sketch comedy isn't just what you think it is. Because of course, uh, sketch comedy has been dominated by one very specific uh, program that being Saturday Night Live for the essentially the entirety of our cultural awareness of it but that isn't all that there is to do and so we we enjoy finding new ways to bring depth and interest and in showing different ways that you can use this medium of, of short plays essentially wow and comedy and we get we get so wrapped up in in that format of SNL yeah. Host comes out, musical guest, this sketch, break, this sketch, break. You know, sometimes you get recurring characters, but... But not often. And because they have to write it all in a week, there isn't a lot of rehearsal. So the, as far as the depth of acting isn't there as much as you would see in a local production like ours, I, I think that we bring a lot of character depth um, similarly, because Saturday Night Live is focused on a very general audience, a national audience that is in the moment, mm -hmm. they, they, um, they, they do what we call premise-based comedy, which is the comedy is coming from the idea. Like you can just tell someone, oh, this is the joke, and they get the joke, and we see the joke a lot. Whereas what we tried to do in Be Kind to Strangers and Pronoia is similar to say the way Neil Simon constructs his comedic plays, which is that it's coming more from the character and the relationship. And you're still getting that five to seven minute story beginning, middle and end with a lot of jokes, but it, it has a little bit more depth to it. And it's such we think clever. 
such clever lines and wit and like yeah it's the, uh, it's the little things that y'all do that sorry maybe loud it's the little things that y'all do that like that bring that that hilarity instead of the yeah. like you're a grocery store attendant who's you know got a limp or whatever you know right or doing a pratfall or doing um something that happened this week and we are just making a joke that this happened this week and isn't it fun that we all recognize it and this person's a little kooky <laughs> um whereas we have a uh, a scene that i think is both very funny and very poignant and uh, about say depression uh right or or using shame as a tool like we we try to show that it is possible to be more than what you think sketch comedy is what i found is interesting is even uh, other theater companies in the united states there's one in florida whose name i can't recall off the top of my head they also specialize in sketch but there is such a uh just a patina just uh an evil aura around the word sketch comedy that just makes people not trust in what you're doing or not take you seriously that almost every company that focuses on what I would call sketch comedy goes out of their way to say they are not sketch comedy in a, in what I find to be a very ridiculous fashion as, as opposed to trying to take back the word or trying to show people that there's more to this genre or this medium. Uh, they're just like, no, 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 that's not us. We do short plays. We do short plays. Yes, they're seven minutes. Yes, they're comedy, but but they're short plays. They're not sketch. Well, and we get we get such a an influx, I think, outside of the theater world of the like YouTube sketch comedy, the like yeah. I don't know college humor kind of stuff. That's like, but it, it runs very deep in that in SNL style absolutely it, it comes out of and i don't necessarily want to get too deep into various <laughs> um schools of, of comedic thought because i'll that's nerd out all day <laughs> yeah but that um the the other thing pronoia really focuses on is improvisation and uh magical lying hours part improvisation there are other improv projects that we do and improv comedy is also something that has been heavily dominated by either whose line is it anyway when I was a child which is short form in games also doesn't have that kind of character depth mm -hmm. or by lately uh, the UCB model of performance which similar to Saturday Night Live prizes that premise based comedy that can stand on its own for about three minutes before you get bored of it as opposed to character relationship based comedy that can stand on its own for uh, quite a lot longer. Uh, and I've seen some w improv has been dominated by that. Uh, you need to be funny. You need to have a premise. You need to get in, get out um, in America for so long. But if you go outside of America to Europe or to Canada, they have a lot of things that are more like what you would see a, a full length play, but these full length plays are improvised and it's, it's it's really bold and interesting. Is that Be Kind of Strangers, uh, are all of those original works, you said, partly improv? Only in rehearsal. By oh. the time we, we get to the actual, like, they're not completely improv, uh, but we like to take advantage of the fact that we are doing work that we control the copyright of. And we don't have to sign licensing agreements with Concord Theatricals or Dramatist Play Service and allow the actors to be involved in the uh, shaping of the work. So, so we That's come so in cool. with a full script. We come in with a full script. It's not as though we uh, make the actors improvise the whole thing. Uh, but we do a lot of conversation with the actors throughout the process of, does this feel right? Does this look right? Should we start going in a different direction? And then throughout our scripts, there are specific lines pretty frequently that are just, you can improvise this line. It's the conclusion of a joke. So if you can think of a better joke than we did, feel free to. That's um, brilliant. And that group, Be Kind of Strangers, we do both sketch and 
uh, currently one act plays. We've done a couple of one act plays that are obviously inspired by sketch because that is where a lot of our writing time has been. But uh, things that are telling a story over an hour as opposed to 10 minutes, like a normal one act play. That's so cool. Yeah. And then the, the other big thing that I am passionate about as a theater producer is that I think theater or live performance is necessary for a good life. I think that anybody can benefit from being out in their community. And I think specifically the more than say live music, the, the drama, putting things on stage can really tell a community about itself. And I like that a lot, but most people feel like they don't necessarily need theater in their everyday life. And they think that theater is stodgy or it's old, it's expensive. Um, they're only ever hearing about Shakespeare or Tennessee Williams. These people who have created great works, but works that aren't immediately relevant to our everyday life. And so the other thing Pronoia likes to do when we can, which we, we do a lot, is we like to do shows in unconventional spaces, spaces where people are. Uh, so that we can potential and the word sketch comedy is also very useful for getting people in because people who would never come see a play, well, you'd come see sketch comedy, wouldn't you? And then we sucker you in with uh, something that is is a little meatier and something that hopefully shows you that being out with other people and seeing this thing being created in front of you is is special for lack of a better word. So we do shows in record shops. We do shows in breweries. That's our, our main place that we premiere our monthly show. Not now, obviously, <laughs> but uh, that we do our monthly show is in at Eureka Heights Brewery. And they've been really fantastic about giving us a space and letting us, um, they financially support us a little bit. So we are able to offer our shows by donation instead of asking for a ticket price, which means that their patrons can just walk in front. If you're getting a beer and you hear a whole bunch of people laughing, you can kind of just wander in and see what's going on. And that I think is really fantastic. And I like trying to bring in a new audience. And that, that really would change the, the dynamic of the people who you get to, to connect with yeah right? it's not absolutely. the it's not the you know stodgy theater group or whatever it's the people hanging out drinking a beer like laughing at yeah. some funny you know theater which is one of uh the biggest differences that i found between houston and a few other theaters that i've been to in the country specifically chicago has just a, more of a sense of fun in a lot of their places. You can bring in a beer, you can bring in a coffee. Uh, their shows, they, they've got theaters kind of stuffed away in weird corners. Like we've got a lot of focus theater in that downtown area, but Chicago kind of just has places in weird areas that you never expect. And then Indianapolis also surprisingly has a very fun theater people that are easy to approach talk to you feel comfortable in their place but they're still creating great work that draws you in wow it's yeah. it's neat to see that there's there's different opportunities or there's different you know uh approaches to theater in different places around around the u.s yeah it's it's really spectacular one of my favorite theaters if you don't mind me talking about please it please do is a place called the Contemporary Theater Company in Wakefield, Rhode Island. We try to go there. And Rhode Island's not a place you would necessarily expect to, to go to. And Wakefield's this tiny town of, I think, 10,000 people. And wow. they've got this place called the Contemporary Theater Company. And it's uh, just, w number one, a wonderful community, very welcoming and then they, much like we're doing with Pronoia, they do a great job of integrating improvisation into the work that they do. So 
in addition to like they were doing a um i forgot his <laughs> david lindsey a bear they were doing a david lindsey a bear play last year uh wonder of the world not one of his more popular ones but they were doing that <laughs> but then in the season slot before they were doing that play they did a six week run of a improvised soap opera that they were going week to week and i've seen them do an improvised murder mystery and i've seen them do all kinds of things and it's just again wonderful to see people who take art very seriously but then take community it still feels very comfortable to be there and to create and uh, again that's where i'm hoping pronoia kind of slots in or can begin to slot into the houston scene definitely that's that's fan that's fantastic i'm i'm curious about uh how how you got to where you are like uh uh you said you grew up outside of houston went to college you, you know mm -hmm. I, I think you said this one of these projects started pretty soon out of college walk me through that uh that timeline absolutely so when i was in elementary school uh, a lot of elementary school kids tend to see plays and i remember seeing uh, beauty and the beast i remember seeing julius caesar i, I saw a lot of plays and any time i saw the play i was like man i want to do this this seems really cool but I was homeschooled for a good portion of my youth. There's not a lot of ability to do theater there. Then I ended up going to a high school that had uh, 20 to 50 students. And although I was told, I went to the principal and said, hey, I really want to do a play. Uh, can I write one? And he said, sure. And then I didn't because I was 15 <laughs> and I didn't have the skills necessary to bring my ideas to fruition. So it wasn't until I got to college, I knew that when I went to college, I wanted to do theater. I didn't know that I wanted to study it. I didn't know that I wanted to make it a profession, but I knew I want to get involved. I've been watching this thing for 17 years. I want to do some of it, see what it's like. So I began taking theater classes and I very quickly decided, no, nah, this, is, this is what I should be doing because I, I like this a lot more than I like physics. <laughs> and... Uh, I, I ended up transferring to Rice, which is where I, I ultimately graduated and I worked in their theater department, which is a really fantastic theater for someone who is just coming into things because it's a small enough program that you can really be taught. You can be taught what you need to be taught. You can get involved in what you need to get involved in. So by the time I graduated, I had, uh, done uh, pretty much everything in some way or another. And I got involved with a, another student there named Jordan Jaffe, who's now in New York. He's a producer in New York. And he and I did a number of shows together with his company, Black Lab. And that was a really fantastic experience. So I graduate and I begin working as a technical director at a local high school in, in Houston, Episcopal High School. And I know that I want to do theater on my own because I don't get to make a lot of choices at Episcopal. I know I want to do theater on my own, but I don't know, I don't have the resources. I don't have the money. I don't have connections, et cetera, et cetera. So what can I do? I start a sketch comedy group. I start an original works group with some of my friends, Dustin Tannehill, Andrew Stout, Dennis Buddy, Liz Castillo. Just names, really. And we start doing work at a local improv theater. And uh, we become very popular at that local improv theater. But uh, I think we spoke about it briefly before and we'll probably will again. There isn't, it's hard to know everything that's going on. And so we, we don't really effectively reach out. Uh, so eventually... They move out of Houston sort of one by one and I'm still running this by myself and more or less that's how we got to where we are is at this point I've produced, I calculated this, uh, I don't remember why, but I over five years between 2013 and 2018 I produced on average one 
sketch show a month, like 45 minutes of original theater per month. So I know that I've done something like 75 at this point, uh, which is not, not a great amount, but it's good to, <laughs> well, what I, what I mean, like it, it, exa- it gets exhausting after a oh, certain sure. of just trying to keep up that pace. Uh, now, while all that was happening, uh, my primary study is in lighting design. So I do lighting design for Boiling Point Players. I've done lighting design for Codeman Running Productions in Houston. I've done lighting for a company on stage here in Houston. Uh, I've acted in a number of productions. I've been stage manager. I've been set designer. So I, I work with uh, several of the sort of community theaters in and around town, specifically those three that I just mentioned, but I also assistant directed at Stages once, and I assistant directed at what was then Stark Naked, what is now Fourth Wall uh, for their production of God of Carnage at one point. So I've kind of hopped around a lot. And yeah, and so a couple of years ago, we at the end of 2018, we decided, or I decided, Uh, I decided that I wanted to leave the improv theater. I wanted to try and go independent, see if I can uh, start doing more because there's only so much story you can tell in 20 minutes. So I started reaching out to various venues around town, seeing if they wanted some people to just come do sketch or other forms of theater. And several of them said yes. And now we are, doing what we're doing. Oh, and actually, I didn't mention this about Magical Lying Hour, uh, the the theatrical improv. We are the most traveled show in Houston. Uh, Wow. So we've gone to Alaska, Rhode Island, New York, Chicago, Georgia, Los Angeles, Oklahoma. Like, we've we've just gone around. We had a residency in San Antonio for a little while. Wow. Wow. So we found a lot of uh, success in the sense that we're doing shows and we're still trying to crack the uh, sustainability aspect as well as the advertising aspect of the whole endeavor, which is where we're, uh, that's not where my skills are. Uh, but that that's how I started and that's how I got to where I am. So right now we're doing... Uh, theoretically, doing a monthly show at Eureka Heights Brewery, where we premiere usually a new hour of theater. Sometimes it's a one-act play, sometimes it's a collection of sketches. We had to cancel our latest show for obvious reasons, Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll probably do it again in August. And yeah. That's, man, that's that's a great journey. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, met uh, a lot of wonderful people. The The show Magical Lying Hour did last night, since we were online, we took advantage and asked people from all, all the people that we've met. So last night's show had people in Singapore, Seattle, Boston, Austin, Chicago, Madison, Wisconsin, just people from all over the United States. And then we are probably going to do one next week which will probably have people from Moscow, Barcelona, uh, Tempere, Finland. Uh, you know, wow. Los and Angeles. Like you, like there's no way to, to do something like that outside of online video no. chat. Yeah, no, there is, there is, the, the internet is really fantastic at connecting people. And then if we can figure out a way to connect to audiences, with that, which a lot of people have. Uh, It's it's really spectacular and it's nice to be able to work with these people more than once or twice a year. With your experience, like walk with me, uh, imagine with me, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, a young high schooler, middle schooler comes up to you and says, I want to do what you're doing. This, this sketch, theater, this improv thing, this producing, this writing original works. I want to do that when I'm your age. Like what's your like little bit of advice that you can give them to like push them in the right direction? The most important thing for sketch is 
honestly, the sorry, there, there are a couple of things. So my brain is racing. Please do. I want to hear them a little all. bit. The best thing about theater is how collaborative it is. You are working with a lot of other people and a lot of other people are bringing all of their best ideas. But that, of course, means that sometimes you won't have the best idea and that can occasionally be difficult for someone to hear. So the absolute best thing that you can do is just learn how to work with and disagree and be disagreed with and just know that when someone rubs up against your idea, it's not because they don't like you. They're just trying, everyone's trying to do the best thing. So get a group together and just start working together and just try to put something up. The, uh, the other great thing about theater, a, a lot like say the game of soccer is that anybody can do it. If you can, I, I remember when I was six years old, my, my friend Zach and I wrote a five page play and we performed it for his mom and dad that day. Like we decided that's what we wanna do. We're, we're gonna write a script, uh, we're gonna do it and we're gonna entertain people with it. And there is, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. If you really wanna do it, just find like-minded people. The internet is also really great at finding like-minded people. Work together, it's gonna be hard. You're gonna feel like you don't know what you're doing. Don't be a perfectionist and start, start doing it. The other thing that I would say is that don't get caught up in trappings of success. If, if, um, if we had, if Pronoia had said, hey, we want to do work and we have to do that work in a conventional theater space that has lights, that is a ticket booth, that has normal audience seating, we'd be able to do one production a year because it costs so much to rent space in Houston. We'd be able to do one production a year and we wouldn't be able to take chances on it. It would have to be something that we knew could get people in. Mm -hmm. But because we said uh, what we're focused on is we want to bring, we want to work together, we want to create a show and we want to show it to people. Let's find just a place where we can do that. So yes, we don't have lighting control. And yes, we don't say have curtains. And so we have to be creative about how we deal with that aspect of things. But it lets you experiment a lot more in your work because now your writing has to uh, overcome obstacles. Your writing has to overcome obstacles that are made by your environment. And that almost always makes your writing better when you're constrained a little bit because you find fun ways to do things. Uh, Monty Python, another fantastic theater group and film group, Monty Python said when they were creating the Holy Grail, you know, we didn't want to make a movie where we were um, clacking coconut shells together to make the sound of horse hooves. We wanted to have a movie with horses in it, but we couldn't afford it. And we had to come up with something new and now you have this wonderful iconic thing that is speaks to what the the show is so because of that challenge we now have something more special and i've found that in almost every aspect of my writing is that the challenges of of dealing with what we have to deal with have made the shows better we don't have lights so we have to make our transitions interesting. But now that means that our transitions are interesting and people are engaged in watching us change scenes instead of just sitting in the dark waiting for something to happen. We don't have, oh, uh, say, an ability to hide props. We, like, we, we have to go kind of far to get our props, which means that any props we have need to be really important and really specific, but that also means we can now hide them in parts of the set and sort of surprise the audience with where they're coming from. So I would definitely say to anyone who wants to get started, don't, don't feel like you need a, a 90 seat black box in order to be legitimate. The fact that you are doing work is legitimate in and of itself. You are making something and that is valuable. 
and I'd really just say, try things. Say yes a lot. Don't say yes to everything, but say yes a lot. If someone says, hey, I've got this idea, say, yeah, let's work on it. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it works out because that's going to lead you to discoveries that you never knew you had. Uh, one of the fantastic things about working with, about giving the actors the ability to shape the scripts a little bit is that they come up with really fantastic ideas, characters, lines, and things. Um, they're already used to having to discover their character without changing anything. So now, now that they can say, hey, I'm trying to do this thing, but like this tiny piece is preventing me. Can we figure out a way around that? Absolutely, we can. So really be, be open, be collaborative find challenges and climb them. That is, that's so inspiring. Like I, you, what you were talking about was through the lens of theater the entire time, but I'm, I'm sitting here like looking at this through the lens of, you know, filmmaking and the lens of like painting and the lens of these things falling down and the, like <laughs> eight other, oh well, eight other lenses that like, what you're talking about is, is creativity and is like yeah. finding a way to be successful. And that is, that is extremely inspiring for myself. And, and I know for, for anyone else who's going to, to, to watch this, to hear what you're saying. I'm glad. Yeah. That's no, so cool. it's art is uh, art and creativity is one of the most wonderful things. I'm sure you feel that way. I know I feel that way. It's, it's hard and it's challenging, but you get to, when, when you make that connection with someone, be it through painting or, or film, or in my case, uh, laughter, it's a feeling unlike anything else in the world. Wow. Look through my notes real quick to make sure we're, we're on the right path. Start magic in here with the story. Oh, you've got a, a podcast uh you're working on is that correct yes yes we we actually have a few things in the works uh one of the nice things about uh being forced to not do most things that distract us is that you you buckle down and get to work so my friend dennis and i he was one of the original members of be kind of strangers who moved to austin a number of years ago we finally followed through on an idea that we had a, a while ago, which is that I am obsessive about US presidents. I just, I really love them. And so we have started two projects, two different podcasts <laughs> about US presidents, which might flood the market a bit, but we'll see. Uh, the first, which is released every Thursday, is called Presidential Deathmatch. You can find that anywhere you want to find podcasts. And Dennis and I debate. Uh, very important questions. Uh, which president would win a three-legged race with his vice president? Which president would feel most at home in a millinery most recently? Uh, upcoming, the episode that will release, uh, I guess, uh, May 14th, which people won't, this will take a, a while to come out, I assume. But uh, we are preparing to debate which president would be the best uh, ghost which present would be the best supernatural horror. This is a really hard project to research. <laughs> Where do you begin? So we're having to ask ourselves uh, questions like, well, which president had the hardest life? Which president uh, was most obsessive? Things like that. So he and I get on and we tell stories about presidents through the lens of whatever it is we are debating. And it's a ton of fun. And then the other presidential project, which you can also find anywhere, but is released more sporadically, is called God Kings. And we are creating a audio sketch for each U.S. president, uh, all, all 44 of them, uh, or maybe 45 of them. Um, and we are uh, hoping to, production is slowed, uh, but we are hoping to do all of them 
by the time of the election because we have a big finale planned. So, so it's not just uh, stories about the presidents. You get stories about the presidents, but then there's this very weird um, sort of magical cosmological thing that's happening in, in the world of the presidents. They, they're all kind of connected stories in a very uh, interesting and I, I hope entertaining way. So that's God Kings, which is released sporadically and Presidential Deathmatch. You can find both of those, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on our website, pronoyatheater.com. And then additionally, a few months ago, we began to film Magical Lying Hour, like we would a, a movie mm -hmm. or a short film or a sketch, uh, just to see if we could create some internet content that was better than the just the sort of static live shots. And we are releasing those every Tuesday through, I think, June 14th or so. There's a new episode. Uh, we took one, one actress and we had her memorize a scene. And uh, then we had her do that scene 10 different times with different improvisers. So it's, <laughs> she's doing the same script, but the improvisers are, are making it different each time. And we're really excited about how that's going. what a neat dynamic to have like one person doing the same thing and you get this series of like different ways to react to the scene or different ways to react to the situation. You said it's, yeah. it's the same scene over and over again or it's something we, the play is the same scene over and over again. The, the reaction is not. Yeah. The turns are different and sometimes it's really remarkable the different directions or the different emotions that, the improviser can pull out of the actor and just sometimes how improvisers take scenes in completely new ways. It's something that we, we got the idea for because obviously I, I rehearse all of the magical lying hour show, scenes with the actors before we go on and, and I'm improvising or I grab improvisers. And so I get to see these scenes done three, four, five different ways before we do the one that's shown in front of the audience. And I thought, man, these are all wonderful in very different ways. We should find a way to, to bring that same feeling. So we occasionally do it live on stage where we'll do the same scene with different performers. And then now we're doing 10 episodes of uh, Ronnie McLaren calling people anti-Semitic and seeing how improvisers react to, to that accusation being lobbed at them not well usually they sure. they don't they don't like <laughs> they don't like it it takes them by surprise and they're like no and these improvisers they don't know the scene no they're no, the, they it's, it's it's they don't have anything planned out i mean it's improv but they don't know what's coming no 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 we stuck them in a room and we said you're going to hang out here until the person shows up and then we're going to begin uh yeah, there are three scenes. Three of the improvisers got done early, and so we filmed another scene with them, but with the same script. So they kind of knew what was coming. But other than that, yeah, they they have no idea. And we're hoping to do more of those in the future. That is so much fun. Yeah, we like it. As uh, as we're wrapping up, as we're looking, as I'm looking forward to like, um what theater in Houston looks like. Um, I know you've, you've been involved with a number of different companies and groups and, and, you know, one-time roles or, or more heavily involved. Are there, what are the, the really neat things happening in theater in Houston right now um, that you've seen that, that like you're excited about as soon as, you know, this quarantine thing drops, like it's really getting you, pumped up one of the one of the greatest things is just the the diversity uh of styles specifically obviously the diversity of, of people involved but you know you go to like i mentioned wakefield rhode island and the theater in wakefield's really fantastic but it's the one theater company there and they are doing their thing whereas in houston you can uh you can go to interactive shows, you can go to comedies, you can go to experimental things, you can go to musicals, you can go to classic works. You know, there's a theater company, uh, you can go to sketch. 
uh, there's a theater company specializing in really whatever it is you want to see, and they are pulling out the best of each genre. And I, I personally really love that. I am excited. I'm always excited to see new work. Uh, that's uh, obviously it's something that I write. It's something that I like a lot. And I know that uh, a couple of companies had to cancel or postpone premieres of new plays. One group that I'm involved with, Cone Man, uh, specializes in new, new plays. And they had one that I was excited about. I'm hoping they get to put it up. Um, really, it's just the people. Uh, the, the reason I like theater more than I like other artistic endeavors is there's that wonderful collaboration when you're working, but there's also the feeling of community when you're all together watching the show. The audiences mm. that come out, uh, you recognize people in the audience, you get to talk to them. Everyone's very complimentary. Everyone's always very excited to be there, to show what they've been working on, to experience it, and to find the good in what is being shown, because sometimes shows don't work out the way you plan them to, but <laughs> everyone's always really jazzed to say what they liked about a show and focus on that more than what they didn't like about the show. Uh, so that's probably what I'm most looking forward to is, is that. And then just to see if anyone takes what is happening and translates it in an interesting way. And I don't necessarily mean work based on this experience, but can we integrate technology more into our shows? Can we do one thing, obviously, because most people are stuck by themselves with a microphone, is we're seeing a proliferation of audio drama, which was my first love. We didn't talk about that, but that's what I listened to. I, I grew up in a town of like 300 people and I was two miles from any of them. So what I did when I was young is I would listen to audio dramas while I was around the house. And so it's exciting for me to hear what people are producing. And uh, I've always wanted to do a radio drama on stage. So just the, the usual things. And I'm, I'm hoping someone will do something like that. What what uh what's the current uh, or the latest audio drama that you listen to, podcast or or high produced yeah. work or whatever? Well, Cone Man, the group that I've uh, I've mentioned a couple of times, they're doing an audio play bracket right now, which I am a writer for. So I I listened to those most recently, but uh, as far. <laughs> It's a it's a silly answer. Um, apart from that, the the last thing I listened to is a show called Bleak Expectations. Do you know that at all? I don't. Uh, it's a BBC radio because radio is very big in England. They still make uh, audio comedies all the time. It's a BBC radio show. You can listen to it on YouTube, and I highly recommend it. It's a very silly parody of Charles Dickens novels, and so it is just this kid and bad things are happening to him and he's in Dickensian England and he's learning how to deal with it uh, but there are just puns and there are sound effects and there are uh, just silly 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 ideas uh, really great for uh, a laugh bleak expectations highly recommend it bleak expectations and then are there, are there uh, people, uh, individuals who uh, you, in Houston, individuals in Houston that you're, you're like big fan of, you'll go see anything that they do, anything they're involved in, like you want to be the first person to buy their ticket. Um, oh, yeah. People for, for the audience and, and for me to, to check out and, and follow. Uh, so I love Boiling Point Players, love Boiling Point Players. Uh, Ruth McCleskey and Autumn Clack, it's a female-focused theater group. And uh, I, assuming everything works out, they are theoretically going to be doing a female-only version of Twelfth Night in the summer. 
in I think August and I, I feel like things will be okay by then. Uh, I, I really love everything that Ruth and Autumn do with Boiling Point Players. This is, uh, I would consider it theater. And so I'm going to say it's Strange Please. Bird Immersive okay. is, a, is a company that does theater shows disguised as escape rooms. And they are wonderful, 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 wonderful. They, they only have one room open at the moment called The Man From Beyond, which is about Houdini. And, but I, I got to go to their new facility. I say I got to go, I bought a ticket <laughs> to go <laughs> to their new facility uh, back in September and they were working on three or four new, new shows that really hit a lot of my buttons. There are things about mirrors. I like mirrors. There's things about photography. Like it, I'm just, I'm very excited to see what they do because I've, I loved that experience of going to see their show. They it really effectively told a story through the medium of an escape room in just a, a really fantastic way. And I read or did read uh, the proprietor's blog where she talks about her thoughts on things and I'm, I'm excited to see what they do next. So that is something I will immediately do whenever there is a new thing from them. Those those are the the group's fourth wall, of course. I love fourth wall. Uh, those are the groups that I I really enjoy seeing their work, and oftentimes I'm working on their work too, which makes my relationship to what they're doing a little bit different than in a normal audience member. When you get to see, like, you get to experience so much more with it and, and like, being involved and being, like, a part of the creation process puts you at, at such a, a deeper, different level of yeah. enjoyment and appreciation for it. Yeah, you definitely see a, a completely different thing. <laughs> my, my friend and I, Stephen, who is the co-owner of the theater company, uh, Stephen Saltzman and I were... Uh, performing in Salt Lake City back in January uh, or he was performing I was his guest I, I was uh, just there and it was my first time not being involved in something in a very long time so I was kind of just hanging around the theater and I was like I don't know what to do and I mentioned it to Stephen and he says yeah no I know what you mean it's like I'm in a theater I should be working what am I doing <laughs> Uh, one other group I would like to mention, they are almost always film, but they do occasionally produce live work. And I really love it when they do is a group called Powder Keg Productions. They are, uh, they run a, a film festival in, in Houston and they're involved in a lot of film things, but occasionally they will also do a sketch show live on stage. And it's always really nice to, to see their work because it's very creative. I want to check them out. Yeah. Well, as we're, as we're wrapping up, um, are there, well, first, are there any, any points or conversations or ideas or thoughts that you've had that like, I haven't asked questions about or, or given you a, an opportunity to talk on? One thing I, we briefly talked about it before, uh, the interview began in earnest, but the, just the idea that there is, I am a relatively plugged in person in, Houston theater and still there are so many times when I will hear about something and go wait that happened I would have loved to see that and just the idea that there is there is so much and yet it is hard to know what is happening and so you end up even auditions shows there are so many times when I will be in Freebirds and pick up a postcard of a show with a friend of mine on the face of it and say, I didn't know that this was happening. I wish I had. Uh, and that I think is going to be an interesting challenge for us all to face. Obviously it's gonna be better for us to deal with it. The ability to get the word out that we're doing things. And that's the primary thing that I, I think uh, most interests me. Um, and other than that, I, I guess I would say, you know, if you're an actor in Houston, 
feel free to take a chance on a group that seems kind of small because uh, because there's a lot of interesting people doing interesting work and we benefit from working together and I would like to meet you and work with you. For sure. How, how can people uh, follow what you're doing, get in contact with you? Um, what's the, what's the avenue for that? Well, as I mentioned earlier in the interview, uh, being available and getting the word out is not my strong suit, nor is advertising. But you can go to our website, pronoiatheater.com. It's P-R-O-N-O-I-A theater.com, E-R, theater, E-R.com, uh, which will have almost, that'll have everything we're doing. Presidential Deathmatch and God Kings are both on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We have a Facebook page. And then if you want to email me, I'll give out my personal email on, on this Garrett. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. Garrett.aaron at gmail.com. Garrett with two R's, two T's, Aaron with two A's. What, oh, one thing. Sorry. I should have mentioned this. Uh, I like the name of our company, Pronoia Theater. A lot of people get confused yeah. by it because it's not, it's not a word they've heard before. But I was, I was stuck for a while on what should I call the theater company? What can I call it? And then I came across the word pronoia and I thought that's, that is everything that I want to be doing. So that is the name of the company. And pronoia is the opposite of paranoia. And it is the irrational belief that people are conspiring to make your life better. Oh my goodness. And I think that is just such a perfect encapsulation of what we do in theater. We are, we want you to come. We want you to enjoy the work and we are just doing it in hopes that you come out and see it. And that is what pronoia means. And that is why we are called pronoia theater. I absolutely love that. I, yeah. Oh, I'm going to start using that word. It's, it's a fantastic word. Uh, it's, I wish it were in more common usage <laughs> for a number of reasons, <laughs> but it's a fantastic idea the, that we are, there is more good in society than there is bad in society. And generally speaking, people want to make things better. And, and we are all here for that. Amen to that. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time today and for, I mean, everything that you're doing in Houston and the theater scene and the advice that you've given and the people that you are reaching out to and affecting with your work, the work that you're doing, the work you're writing, the work you're producing, just it's, it's fantastic. Thank you so much for all that you're doing. Thank you very much. I, I really enjoyed it. Hey there. Thank you for listening, for watching, for being a part of the Houston theater scene. If you are interested in one of these conversations with me. I'd love to have you on the show. I'd love to talk to you about what you're doing inside the Houston theater scene. Of course, we are in a mode right now with COVID where we're not able to get out and see a lot of shows. There's a lot going on online, a lot of video content, a lot of audio content. I would love to share that information out as well. Be sure to check out the next couple episodes. I've got about three three conversations on the on my hard drive that I am trying to cut together and get out to y'all as soon as possible while not letting my OCD perfectionist mind take over and delay these forever. Anyway, if you want to reach out to me, Houston theater scene at gmail.com. Shoot me an email. Follow me on all the social medias. Kale Ownby or Houston theater scene. I'm present on most of them. Reach out to me. Keep your ears and your eyes open for the next episode coming out soon. Thanks. Take care. <laughs>